Okay, so we're going to continue our conversation about nomenclature. We're now going to be kind of talking about how to name alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, and rings. So we have to remember we're still following the same rules we talked about in our basic nomenclature video, but there's going to be some subtle changes for each of these functional groups. So first, let's talk about how to name alkenes, okay? The changes are, really, the first thing is we have to identify the longest carbon chain that goes through the carbon-carbon double bond, okay? So essentially what we're going to see is now our alkene has a higher priority. We have to find the chain that goes through the carbon-carbon double bond. Second bullet point we have to know is about numbering. So we want to number the carbons of the chain. So the first carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond gets the lowest possible number. We're still going to start at the end, but now our alkene has a higher priority. We need to give the first carbon of that alkene the lowest possible number while starting at the end. And then how do we change the name? We're going to change A-N-E to E-N-E, -E, and then we're going to insert the number of the first carbon of the C double bond C. So let's look at an example here. So if we look at this structure here, okay, if you look, we have a double bond. So the question is, do I number from, we have to number through the, we have to um, find the longest chain through the double bond. Do I number from left to right or right to left? Well, if we go left to right, we'd have carbon one, two, three, four. So our alkene would be at four. Right to left, one, two, three. So the first carbon of the double bond would be three. So therefore, we number from right to left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as you can see, right? We've got a chlorine at three. We have another methyl at six. Again, we alphabetize those. So let's see how we include this number three in here. So it turns out there's really two options. The first um, option I'm going to teach you is sort of the best way, and we'll see later in the video why. So we start with 3-chloro, dash, 6-methyl, no space, no dash, 7 carbons is a hept. Then we put a dash, 3, and then E-N-E. -E. All right, so we're showing that our alkene is at carbon 3. And we just put the one number 3. Or that means our alkene is from 3 to 4. Right, so we're only going to put one number to describe the alkene. The other method is you can just put the number 3 in front of the hept. So we can go 3-chloro, 6-methyl, dash, 3-heptene. So either of these are fine. When you have a simple alkene, you can embed the number within, or you can put the number in front. Pretty simple. So let's now look at alkynes. Okay, we'll look at alkynes. And basically what you're going to notice, it's the same thing. Okay, so we're going to identify the longest carbon chain that goes through the carbon-carbon triple bond. We're going to number the carbons of the chain. So the first carbon of the carbon-carbon triple bond gets the lowest possible number. Again, we still start at the end. And now we're going to change A-N-E to Y-N-E for alkyne. Okay? And insert the number just like we did before. So this is a very simple example. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. This is a hex. Clearly, we go left to right because that puts the first carbon of the triple bond, gives it a number two as opposed to right to left, right? So this is a hexine. It's a hex two ine, right? Hex dash two ine. So we can embed the number right before the Y and E, or because it's a simple example, we can just put the number in front, two dash hexine, all right? So alkenes, alkynes, same basic rules. Let's next look at sort of our alcohols. Okay, so let's figure out how to name our alcohols here. Again, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to identify the longest carbon chain that goes through the carbon that's directly connected to the OH, right? Remember, when we're finding our carbon chain, we have to have carbons, right? So the C that's connected to the OH has to be part of the longest chain. In this example, that's going to be carbon-3 here. So let me just highlight that. That's carbon-3. All right. Again, we're going to number the carbons of the chain. So the carbon that's connected to the OH gets the lowest possible number. We still start at the end. 
And now, how do we say that we have an alcohol? You're going to drop or replace that final E of like A-N-E or E-N-E, -E, right? So this final E here or here is now going to become O-L. And again, we have to number the position of that COH. So if we look at this example over here, okay, we have nine carbons. If I went right to left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the carbon of the OH would be at a seven. That's no good. Left to right, one, two, three. So we're going to number left to right here. You see that we have a methyl group at eight. We have a bromine at seven. Again, we're going to alphabetize those. Seven, bromo, eight, methyl, no space, nine carbons is known, right? No alkane, so this is no name. Now we put a dash, three dash OL. Okay, so here we are again embedding the number within. Because this is a simple alcohol, we can also just put the number in front of no name all, right? So we can call this seven bromo, eight methyl, dash three, no name all. Oops, sorry. 7-bromo-8-methyl-3-nonanol. So again, you can embed the number or put it in front when you have a simple alkene, alkyne, or alcohol. Let's talk about rings. Rings are pretty, pretty straightforward. If you have a ring, we're just going to call that compound cyclo. Okay, so see, if you look here, in this example, we have one two, three, four, five carbons, that means a ring. So that name would obviously be cyclopentane. Pentane meaning we have five carbons. Next example, we have four carbons, one, two, three, four, that's a butte. So this compound is simply called cyclobutane. Pretty simple. The thing that makes this a little more complex is when you talk about numbering. So when you number, it's not a chain anymore. There's not a left to right or right to left, right? We're going to follow the same basic rules, but you have to figure out where you want to start numbering and then what direction you want to go, clockwise or counterclockwise. And again, we want to give a number to something that has the highest priority. So if we look at this example over here, okay, here I have a six-membered ring. So this is a cyclo compound. Now we have to figure out where to start numbering. Well, we know that an OH has a higher priority, so we want to give that carbon a number one, all right? Now the question is, do we go counterclockwise or do we go clockwise? Well, if we remember our basic rules, we want the next substituent group to get the lowest possible number. So if I went left to right, it would be one, two, three, four. Our first substituent would be a chlorine at four. Right to left, one, two, three, our first substituent group is the methyl that comes at three. So we obviously want a number right to left. All right, so again, we have a methyl, we have a chlorine, we put those in alphabetical order, right? So we have four chloro, three methyl, cyclohexanol. So one thing we need to remember or know is that if you have one of your main groups in the root name, it's okay to leave out the number if it's number one. Okay, so in this example, I, it's okay for me to leave out the number one. If there's no number, we always assume it's number one. Two other ways to do this. We can include the number one. So again, four chloro, three methyl. Now I put the number one in front of cyclohexanol. Or again, remember, we can embed the number one in. So we can do 4-chloro, 3-methyl, no space, right into cyclo cyclohexane, dash 1, dash all. Right. So now we're really embedding that number within. So really, all three of these names are acceptable ways to name this compound. So let's just kind of review a little bit about this priority shift, okay? Basically, what we're seeing from this is that these functional groups, alkenes, alcohols, and alkynes, have a higher priority than what we've seen before, right? They have a higher priority than alkyl groups and halogens, 
okay? So that means that we now have a relative priority order, and that order is this. Out of the, out of the functional groups that we've really talked about, alcohols have the highest priority, alkenes and alkynes are number two, and then number three is what we've already learned, alkyl groups and halogens, really no difference in priority for those. So what that means is we can name compounds that have alkenes and alkynes. So if you look at this example here, I have an alkene here, I have an alcohol here. What has the higher priority? The alcohol has the higher priority. So that means I need to number from right to left to give the alcohol the lowest possible number. So we go right to left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? The alcohol is part of the name, so we have a bromine. That bromine's at 5, so we call this compound 5-bromo-oct, because we have 8 carbons. This is an octene all, right? We have an octene all. And then now we have to embed the numbers within. Because there's two functional groups within the root name, we cannot put the numbers in front. They have to be embedded in. So that's why I like to just embed the numbers in as we go, because there's some cases where you don't have to. This is a case where you have to, okay? So we have to embed the numbers in. The order is always octene all. Oct, the first carbon of the double bond is six. That's for the ene. Dash two, that's where the alcohol is, O-L, okay? So again, because the main chain, be contains an alkene and an alcohol, we have to embed the numbers. And as a reminder, E and E, there's no E here, right? Because it's an alcohol, we replace that E with an O-L, okay? So it's important to remember there's really a priority shift with these functional groups compared to our normal alkyl groups or halogens.